the domestication of the horse was a seminal event in human history. It is right up there with the invention of fire and stone tools, in my opinion. My main goal in establishing History of the Horse in the documentary format is to educate people where we've been with horses, where we can go with horses, and how important they have been throughout history. The horse family, uh, as we know, originated in America, and uh, it's, it's, it's been the, uh, the place where horses have had the most biological success. It's where they have diversified into more different kinds of, uh, of animals. He uh, called back to say, uh, how old do you think this horse is? <laughs> And that's when we found out he was 26,000 years old. So that was um, qu quite a surprise to all of us because we've never seen um, that kind of preservation and that intact specimen before. Early man, when they started gentling or training horses, it was used for carrying purposes only. And somebody got the guts to jump on their back. From that point in time, they realized that they could actually breed for specific purposes. One being the great big draft horse to plow the fields, pull the carts. Since man first established a relationship with horses, they were used not only for plowing fields, but to conquer an existing land or expand upon, like the Mongols, Genghis Khan, Native American Wars. We counted them to pull our cannons, our wagons, going into battle, but there's many, many famous wars, including the Civil War, where they gave up their lives for us. Hey, that's Roy Rogers and Trigger. The huge success of William S. Hart and Tom Mix just spawned a whole new crop of cowboy actors, many of whom were real cowboys, rodeo cowboys and Wild West riders who came to Hollywood to capitalize on the Western craze. And so there were a number of these guys who acted in movies and of course they all had to be paired with a horse. Evolution had a hand in making the athlete out of the horse. Because they were a prey animal, they had to have agility, natural speed, and endurance to outrun their predators. Quarter horses were bred for speed also, besides their strength. They're the fastest horse in a quarter of a mile. Today, there's millions of dollars bet on racing between thoroughbreds and quarter horses. Take, for instance, Seabiscuit. He was born and bred and raced in the time of the Great Depression. He was the common man's horse. He unified everybody in the country. He became a national hero. Hey, baby. Horses have been our companions since day one. But on a personal basis, when I have a horse that becomes my companion, meaning it's trusting and trustworthy, there's no greater feeling. We go out for a casual walk. It's a stress relief. When people say there's nothing better for the inside of a man than the outside of a horse, that's true. 
Horses have been known as healers for many centuries for therapeutic reasons, from very small children, from infants that have birth defects, for instance, physical handicaps that they can't physically walk. Riding on that horse is very therapeutic, actually develops their muscles and coordination. When you're on a horse, it entails freedom, a, a sense of well-being that we all want to experience anyway. But learning about the history of the horse, people will learn and understand completely. Without the horse, we wouldn't be where we're at today.